Sorry for being late. If you can let me know that you can hear me in the comment section, that would be great. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and get started because, you know, I'm sure it's late where you guys are at. Okay. I want to say hello, my truth seekers. Welcome to the truth show. In this video, I will be talking about self-mutilation and lifestyle talk. I will also discuss the latest news. Again, we're going to be talking about self-mutilation and lifestyle talk. We're also going to be discussing um, the Israel and Hamas and politics and world news, the latest information from that. And we're also going to be talking about Jada Pickens Smith book. I have her audio book and I have been reading it, believe it or not. So we're going to, I'm going to give a brief review on what I've learned from her book. And then if we have time, we'll talk about the Anunnaki flower and what identifies their projects and followers. You'd be surprised. I noticed there was a trend here when it comes to the Anunnaki. Um, they stamped their um, little seal on a lot of their projects that's been overlooked. So we're definitely going to be talking about that. Okay, I'm going to be doing a lot of freestyle today too, just to let you guys know. So be ready for that. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. All right, fantastic. All right, we're going to be talking about self mutilation. Self mutilation is a non suicidal self injury. Often, hi Alicia, welcome. Self mutilation is a non suicidal self injury, often called, well, it's called self injury, <laughs> which is deliberately harming the surface of your body, such as cutting or burning yourself. It's typically not meant as a suicide attempt. With that in mind, let's talk about excessive tattooing. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not against tattooing because some are very beautiful and part of our heritage. So, please do not think that, okay, she like tattooing. What's up with that? No, I love tattooing. I do. I think I have tattoos. But there is a certain degree of tattoos that we really should talk about that's very disturbing. I think you guys should know, especially all of you who have a lot of tattoos or tattoos in general we all have them but there's something you should know about tattooing okay okay you gotta understand are you guys still with me here I hope I'm not keeping you guys up let me know if I'm keeping you guys up tell me in the comment section because <laughs> I know it can be pretty annoying for me to be talking about this and you guys are seriously in bed right now hi Nicole welcome okay so in Samo southwestern Polynesia tattooing was the fashion for both men and women okay it marked humanities assuming the social status of an adult men of the common class were tattooed see this goes back in years and thousands thousands and thousands of years okay and it did start with you know negro black people it started with the uh with our kind of people okay so it identified class so men of the common class were tattooed a solid black from waist to knees whereas a man of chiefly rank was covered in that area with elaborately intricate patterns you know like you know I get into all that later. Variations and motifs indicated degrees of rank and of profession. Okay, so these tattooing was a way to identify social class and the person's title. That's what tattooing was originally for. Okay, now due to what's affected only by the chieftains—that's what they call them—may be worn by anyone who can pay for them. Okay. So if you were able to pay for a nice little chunk of change to the local villager who did the tattooing or marking, you can get by with a decent tattoo, but you can't get the tattoo that will lie about your social class, but you definitely get a tattoo that will identify you from your tribes. Okay? So that's what tattooing was initially. Oh, are you sick, Nicole? I'm sorry to hear that. Oh. 
Hi, Pamela. Okay. So, you understand, women were to get tattooed in their legs. So, they got tattooed in their legs and hands with dainty patterns and wide intervals, producing an effect in embroidery rather than a solid pattern. You know, the embroidery patterns you probably saw on um, Rihanna or something like that. Yes, those type of patterns, okay? Tattooing was a stamp of identity, rank, or status. Again, it was meant for these reasons and these reasons only. But over the years... People start using them. Hi, hot, hot, hot off the press. People start getting them for personal, and uh, we'll get into the darkness of that in a minute. Okay? Then you understand. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> you understand. They weren't doing it out of some. Back then, they weren't doing it out of some hidden, sadistic, twisted reason, such as depression or guilt or some kind of unexpressed pain from some hidden memory of some kind, whereas you use a needle to chastise yourself or to feel pain that allows you to stop thinking during a time of distress. Most people are doing it for. Feeling the needle going in and out, in and out takes you, I mean, it takes your mind off your hidden problem. This is what people tell me and why they get it. And this is no lies, okay? They like the needle going in and out, in and out, like thousands of times. It takes their mind off their problems and hunting thoughts and sometimes voices. This feeling can become addictive where you can't stop. It also is a substitution for blatantly cutting yourself. You know how people were, I think uh, Princess Diana admitted that she used to cut herself because she was depressed or whatever. Some people substitute tattooing from cutting yourself. Like, it's just a tattoo. You're substituting this for something because you can't stop getting tattoos. It's an addiction. But there's a downfall to this addiction. I can understand if you want to get a nice little flower or some artistic beauty that enhance your body and make it sexy. Some people tattoos are very sexy. Okay, both male and female. Okay, but then it started getting very disturbing like these young men here. That, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, these are very dark tattoos. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so you gotta understand. It can also be deadly and cause long-term effects. Tattoos are harmful because they breach the skin and expose it to infections, allergic reactions, and blood-borne diseases. Tattooing also damages the skin and causes blood clots and bruising. Oh yes. Moreover, some tattoo inks contain chemicals that causes cancer, such as heavy metals, pyrosilic aromatic. Oh, yeah, it is. It's definitely some deflection. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Definitely. But, yes, yeah, such as heavy metal, pyrosilic, aromatic, hydrocarbons, and aromatic amines. Tattoos can also interfere with MRI scans and cause complications. So, if one gets too many tattoos when they have, like, some health issue or cancer or anything that needs to be identified under the MRI, that, that tattoo and the ink that's in their skin, it kind of interferes with the MRI scan so no one can tell if they have an infection because they have too many tattoos over their bodies. You know? So... That's definitely a problem for health reasons aside from they're injecting all this ink and, and, and harmful chemicals in their skin all over their bodies, putting it in their necks, put it in their hands, put it in their feet. They're going crazy. They don't even see how it messes up with your brain and your health. They think it's art. There's art and then there's obsession and some psychological reason on why you're getting it. I'm a tell you guys and give you guys an insight on how to tell if a person is doing it for artistic reasons or they have some serious issues okay there are clear warnings for this okay now you understand with all this said please be mindful what you inject in your skin or body hold on You guys are still with me, right? Okay. Yeah, please be mindful what you inject in your skin or body. Also, be cautious of anyone who has excessive tattooing. This means they have some deep psychological things, I can say that enough, going on with them. And they're using tattooing to numb the painful memories. Suppose a person can't deal with their illness and, and I mean, I mean, 
heaven forbid if they can't deal with their illness in a more productive and less arbitrary and painful way you know because then maybe they may be unable you understand they may be unable to do many other things as well if they can't stop tattooing or deal with their issues in less sadistic ways i mean who who to say they can't do other things you know other things and asking them to stop will force them to substitute that pain for something else like something sadistic or something evil please proceed with caution for anyone who has excessive tattoos okay if they getting tattoos on their neck if they're getting tattoos all over their body the whole body is like some sick nightmare run please run because it's not artistic i mean this person has some serious psychological issues because they like that needle going in and out what are they substituting for it's not an art anymore if you can't even find the art within the excessive tattoo and this over tattoo is becoming a, a nightmare they literally have their nightmares embedded in their skin are you guys still with me you guys are still with me right I'm just going to continue because I don't know if you guys are with me or not. All right, so that is a fair warning I want to give you guys. I'm going to move on to the next subject. Oh, okay. I was worried. We're going to move on to politics and world news. It's getting so deadly out here. And Hamas and Israel, the Palestinians, I mean, it is getting so, so, oh, uh, reading about that is, I'm having mixed emotions, I'm going to be real with you, okay? I'm just going to give you a brief preview of this, and we're going to move on because I don't want to talk about this subject, honestly. So, Israel versus Hamas updates. It seems that 11 days after Hamas militants killed more than 1,400 people during a horrifying incursion in, into, into Israel, the Israel military's ground invasion of Gaza, <laughs> some sometimes, well, you got to understand, Gaza continues to loom as the humanitarian crisis in Gaza gets more and more dire stress. Israel has continuous relentless airstrike into the Gaza Strip. I mean, they just throwing bombs and all kinds of stuff all into the Strip. Just don't care if they hit women, women and children. Who gives a damn? This is how Israel work. Yeah. Where health authorities say more than 2,800 people have already been killed hundreds of thousands of palestinian civilians have fled the north ahead of the invasion which has overwhelmed communities in southern gaza where israel is also conducting their strikes uh-huh so they're moving to another area and israel is finding them and they decide oh you know what we know you guys are running over there, so we're just going to go ahead and just, you know, work on our airstrikes right quick. Because, you know, we don't care. Because this is our land, and we want you out, dead or alive. This is going through the Israel mind. You know what I mean? This is, we're literally watching history play before our eyes. This is what happens, this is what had happened thousands of years ago, before these people habitated this land. This is what they did to people who was the original habitators of that land okay now if you read or pay attention to my last video okay they got their weapons well allegedly got their weapons from history apparently the Anunnaki and people of that identities who were you know they call them extraterrestrials but you could call them I guess anyway so they, worked, they worked out with the current leaders of that land and they supplied them with weapons. You ever wonder where the weapons come from? The shields, the swords. How do they learn all that stuff? That's how they learned those stuff. Okay? There was other identities. You want to call them that. Gods and goddesses, whatever you want to call them. They taught them how to make these kind of weaponaries and other things because they had an agenda of control and mind control and slavery that was their control okay and, and these are kind of facts because you can read these in the tablets you can read some of this in the Bible as well Ethiopian Bible it's in there trust me 
Okay. They go by different names, though. They don't go by the name Anunnaki. They go by something else. Inlus and people of that nature. And I'm going to show you how to identify Anunnaki. They, go, they have a particular symbol that they use, and I'll tell you about that later. Okay. So, these families who went to this area for some kind of protection, okay, but it seems that the families of nearly 200 Israel hostages that was taken by the Hamas continued to wait for answers about the fates of their loved ones. So they running, but Israel armies are finding them and they're killing them. Yeah, it's getting very dark, yeah. Okay. And I'm not even done yet. In Gaza, apparently there was an explosion at the anti-Ali Arab or Arab hospital in Gaza City on Tuesday, which was today, actually. I don't know why I got two. Well, anyway, probably Tuesday night over there. It's probably yesterday from there for them over there. They killed at least 500 people, according to Gaza Health Ministry, which is run by Hamas. Purported video footage of the aftermath showed scores of dead and wounded soldiers. I'm going to play a little bit. See, there's the missile there. You see? There it is. And there we go. And boom, look at that. See that? This is what's going on down there. Yeah, it has no volume, so I'm sorry. It doesn't have a volume. It doesn't have volume on this video. This is so sad. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. We're going to stop right here. Now, how... Hamas and Israel immediately, they, I mean, this is what Hamas and Israel immediately claimed. They claimed that the other was responsible for the blast. They was like, we didn't do this. We don't know who did this. I'm not sure who the other is. So Hamas and Israel are not, they're saying we didn't do this blast. I don't know where this blast come from, but we didn't do it. This is what, so everyone is saying, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know. Because it hit the hospital. There's women and children and sick people in the hospital, but someone's blasting hospitals now. Okay, we're blasting hospitals now? Okay. Hamas said an Israel airstrike was to blame. In contrast, Israeli military claim a failed Islamic jihad rocking, rocket or something. Some jihad rocket. Referring to the Hamas aligned militant group in the Gaza Strip. That caused the explosion. Either way, it's, it's the single deadliest incident in Gaza since the wars began between Hamas and Israel in 2008. So, first they were just, you know, scavenging lands and, you know, running them away from the lands, you know, blah, 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 and shooting anyone in their path. But now they're throwing missiles in hospitals now. Okay, that generally don't supposed to be a bombing territory. That's generally a, a broken rule, but they're bombing hospitals. But Israel said, we did not do this. Hamas said, well, we didn't do it. So, whatever. It's getting worse and worse at this war. It's not improving. It's getting worse. Okay? I mean, you, you know, this war is still, it's so freaking conflicted. It's still, I mean, I can't even, it's still so uh, shocking. You know, and, and it's too emotional to discuss. So, I'm just going to move on. And I'm just going to say this. Isn't worth all this bloodshed for greed? They couldn't achieve an agreement diplomatically? Y'all can have a meeting and say, okay, what if you do this? And we come to some agreement to share a land or something. You have to go through all this just because you want someone to like, what the hell are we in the dark ages? This is so extra and just not even necessary. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Ugh. So terrible. Just, uh, I can't even fathom. Mm -mm -mm. You're blinded by the action. You need that. Uh, just crazy. All right, move right along here. Okay, so we're going to talk about Jada Pickens' book. I have my notes here. And, ooh, you, I hope you guys are ready for this little tea because I got notes, pages of notes. Oh, yes. I might even play some audio for you guys if it acts right. Because remember, I told you guys I have the audio book about 
her now the first four chapters of this book the first four chapters of this book I'm gonna be honest with you she was pretty much talking about her childhood her parents and then as it as the chapters progresses that's when uh, Tupac comes in the, in the story so Tupac came in the story later she talked about her grandmother a lot her grandmother was definitely in her life you know um, she really loved her grandmother she talked really highly of her matter of fact she talked more highly of her grandmother than she did of her own mother I mean from what I got from my notes I gotta pass my Egyptian notes first I have a bunch of those here we go. My data notes right here. Okay. The first thing I first thing she talked about, and I'm gonna try to play a little bit here for you. See if you can hear it. Quick. But anyways, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and multitask for you guys. Um, it was one particular part of her book before she go through a whole prologue and stuff like that. She used to sneak out of the house at night to meet her boyfriend as a teenager. I'm assuming he worked at the gas station. I kind of missed that part. While her mother was working the graveyard shift. So her mother worked the graveyard shift as an Aryan nurse or something like that. So her mother worked from 7 to 7 every night. Which left Jada all by herself and pretty much to raise herself. So Jada pretty much raised herself predominantly through her childhood. The stories about her mom are not marriage. I feel so sorry for her. You know, her mother was always on drugs. And you gotta understand, Jada mother, how she got pregnant with Jada, and I learned this later. I don't know if it's in a book yet, I'm only in the fifth chapter. But what I got from other research is that her mother got pregnant with Jada by her father, but it wasn't consensual. She was raped. That's what I got. And that was from research, but it would definitely explain the actions of her mother and this needing to be loved or accepted or included and that explains that need that she has and there was some other things that i learned too while this is still trying to catch up here okay she used to sneak out of the house to meet her boyfriend as a teenager that worked at a gas station while her mother let's bring up some pictures got pictures here okay while her mother worked the graveyard ship she was Dominantly raised by her grandmother. She also stopped by, she also got stopped by a white man pretending to look for a dog while he was masturbating. So she avoided being kidnapped by some white man who was looking for some kid to snatch up. Um, her, grandma, her grandmother and her auntie got her into activism. Her mother was uh, always on drugs and club hopping at all hours of the night. She wasn't doing that. She was uh, at work. Her father used to beat her mother, and one time her mother abandoned her as a baby to escape, to escape her uh, father's beatings. She was a baby, and her mom just left because her father kept beating her, her, um, her mother. So she said, Jada said, she was like, paraphrasing, I understand how, why she did that because apparently she was that frightened, whereas she felt that my father would never hurt me. But she was so scared, so she left me behind because she knew my father would not hurt me. So I understand that she had to survive. The way she accepted this abuse, it's very puzzling. And in the book, she spoke highly of her father, who seems to be a freaking nightmare, who was also on drugs all the time, but didn't really speak that highly about her mother. Which I thought was very weird. Anyway, and it seems that even though her father was a nightmare, it seems that Jada was oblivious to her mother darkness and violent life. I mean, to her, this is normal. She said one time she was definitely in bed where her mother was getting dressed or whatever. And she saw her mother get dressed for the first time. She saw a scar in her mom's back and it looked fresh. And she asked her mom about the scar and her mom really didn't answer her. So her, mom, her mother definitely had a lot of bruises. This is her father. I'm assuming this is her father right here. And alcoholism and mental illness runs through her family. So her grandmother, you guys are still with me here? It seems that alcoholism and mental illness runs through her family. Her auntie and grandmother, I think her auntie, her auntie used to drink all the time. Like, all the time. So all this ran through her family. And they definitely had some serious issues from what I heard so far. Now it seems that her narcissism could stem from being left alone and never... 
And she was never her um, parents' priority. So she became rebellious to get attention. She loved, you know, and you know, I'm starting to realize some things. She loved road trips. And, and it's weird because she loved road trips. She said road trips is one of her most passions to be on a road, to experience. She loves adventures. And it's funny because. We'll also lo love road trips, but you barely see them on road trips together. I'm assuming that maybe they just didn't share, but I doubt if they not share their road trips. I mean, who would not share that? They share everything else. So I find that weird that, you know, Will don't take her on some of these road trips because Jada actually loved doing these things. She loves going on the road. She loves traveling. She loves experiencing a lot of things. But it seems that she never be on these adventures with Will. Will is always by himself with a whole bunch of other people. I wonder if that also caused resentment. Because Jada said in her book she loves road trips. Okay. Jada definitely has abandonment issues. Her mother was barely there, as I said, around her, which resulted because her mother was always on drugs all the time. Like I said. She was once arrested. Jada was once arrested and taken to the police station after getting into a stolen car. Her mother told her to tell the truth, so she told the truth and pretended she didn't know that the car was stolen. And I don't think she did because she didn't say she did on the um, audio. Jada's mother was a heavy drug addict, as I said. Jada also sold drugs to survive. And she has this thing. She said repeatedly in her book, she don't want to allow any man to have financial power over her because that's, how, that's what she was taught. Her grandmother was also, I think her grandmother was a nurse. And her grandfather was a lawyer. So she come from a very academic background. Which is odd because her mother turned out. I don't know how that whole really. I don't know how she speak about her grandmother in this such highly, you know, angelic way. But her mom, what the hell happened? I mean, how can her mom be just like this? And, you know, and she speaks of her grandmother so wonderful. But her mom turned out to be this heavy drug addict. I don't understand that at all. It's one thing I, I'm just not comprehending here. Her first kiss was not with Tupac, but she kissed Tupac because they were just close friends and they met when she came into some building and she had she kissed Tupac and she said it was the most disgusting kiss that they ever encountered and they swear just to be friends. They knew if they got into a real serious relationship, it would be toxic. So they were just deeply friendship. She bonded with Tupac because they both come from broken families. And she used to help Tupac all the time. Bought him clothes and fed him and everything. She just liked helping people apparently. She likes feeling needed. She likes feeling um, accepted. You know, she likes this kind of stuff. She loves helping people. And when she doesn't feel needed or accepted, she loses interest. And sometimes it comes out in really evil and spiteful ways. It says, then she says, Tupac taught her history. She was inspired. He reminded her of, apparently, the other connection she has with Tupac because he reminded her of her auntie who was also in acti activism, you know, and love history and, you know, doing what's right and civil rights and stuff. Tupac was really into that stuff and she liked that about him. You know, they connect on a really deep insight level, you know, probably connect. She probably don't have too much with Will. Smith, but they were never romantically involved. They just had a really deep friendship like brothers. Jada says she also loves friend freedom and hates confinement. Jada once chased a person who she was she went to the gas station apparently and uh, I'm assuming it's a gas station. I forgot what she said. She went to a gas station to cash her check and do handed her seven hundred dollars because she was doing some acting gigs at the time. And she was really short, so this guy, this really tall guy that was standing behind her, reached over her and took her money and started running. So she chased after the guy for a long time with some switchblade. <laughs> her friend was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, <laughs> she was, <laughs> oh, I was crazy. She was like, what are you going to do when she decided that she was never going to catch the dude? And she went back to the store and, you know, caught up with her friend. Her friend was like, what were you going to do when you catch this dude, if you catch this dude? She was like, I was going to slice his heart open or something like that. But then she calmed down. Her adrenaline was gone. And her and her friend had a nice night drunk and everything. And she said, but they went to some party or something. Forgot what the place. When they went to some event, she saw the dude that took her money. And she was like, contemplate, should I go down there and confront him? 
But she was like, my adrenaline was down, so my bravery wasn't up there, paraphrasing. So she's like, you know, I'm just going to call it a loss. And she said, at that moment, she realized that she needed to stop acting on impulse, which I think she probably forgot in recent days. But she has a habit of acting on impulse without thinking. She was pretty rebellious as a kid. And the letter from Tupac that she pretty much broadcast on Instagram page was a letter of Tupac saying goodbye because he was moving from their hometown to California and he wanted her to come. Not as his girlfriend, but just to come to hang out or whatever. You know, that's pretty much what it was. Yes, her mom and her um, grandmother was definitely nurses, yes. Jada sold drugs for years. She sold drugs for a very, very long time. Very. She was also working at gigs, acting gigs. And she, did, she, she said her first gig was her playing a slave or something like that. So she was making money as an actress at the time doing these little gigs and whatnot. But she also sold drugs on the side. Okay, it's playing now. Find your tribe. Love them hard. Anonymous. Oh, this is the fifth chapter. I'm so great. Chapter one. Here we go. My grandmother's garden. It's close to midnight in the warm summer darkness, and I feel wild and free. I'm doing something I have no business doing, and I'm loving it. Living on the edge is already a habit, and in the years to come, will be an addiction. I've just slipped out of the kitchen's back door to an alley behind our modest row house on Price Avenue, a side street tucked in between two main thoroughfares in the working class neighborhood of Northwest Baltimore's Pimlico Heights. I press myself up and over the old metal gate and land on my feet like a cat. These are the moments when my dance and gymnastics classes come in handy. I charge down the alley, turning a sharp left to head south, then east, then north, in a kind of horseshoe direction. I'm 13 going on 14. And I'm on a mission to see my 16-year-old boyfriend who works the overnight shift at the 7-Eleven. It's about a 25-minute walk that by day is full of the noisy hustle and bustle of business and traffic. But now is mostly quiet. Small sounds, a delivery truck here or a train rattling by over there punctuate the silence. This is a working-class neighborhood that's butted up against a hood that is... Let's say, tricky. All kinds of characters trickle into this area, especially at night. Gotta keep my eyes open and my guard up. My route runs past the Reisterstown subway station, which is how I get around when moving to different parts of town, followed by a shopping mall with a Payless and a Kmart that my mother and I frequent, and then along sleepy residential blocks where many of the street lights are out. At times, it's so dark, I can barely make out the homes of friends who live in the neighborhood. My stops and starts take me across two well-trafficked parkways, still in the darkness, and finally up a less dark stretch that will land me at the brightly lit glass doors of the 7-Eleven. Dressed in jeans, a t-shirt, and sneakers, I'm tomboy cute right now. I have my hair pulled back into a sleek pony knot, with the edges slicked down by pro-style gel. And because of the humidity, I probably hit him with a toncho stick as well. I gotta be cute, but not stupid. Four years earlier, when I was nine, I was leaving my grandmother's house to walk to a nearby shopping mall. Her neighborhood is considered upper middle class, predominantly white, with a huge Hasidic Jewish community. At screaming distance from my grandmother's, I wasn't overly concerned when a young white guy driving a beat-up gray car pulled over next to me on the curb. He leaned toward the open passenger window. Hey. Yes, I answered. Have you seen a puppy around here? I leaned in a little closer. No, I haven't seen a puppy. Do you know where Graveyard Street is? As he spoke, I noticed him jerking off through the opening of his dingy trench coat. No, I muttered and I kept walking. The flasher didn't drive off immediately. By reflex, I glanced to my right without turning my head, making sure he didn't jump out and try to grab me. Right there, fortunately, was a synagogue parking lot. I moved toward it as if it were my destination, just in case. I kept strolling 
and he pulled off. I turned to watch him leave and made sure he didn't turn the corner to come back around. He screeched off, but I kept my eyes on him until he disappeared. In that moment, I learned you gotta have eyes in the back of your head, show no fear, and act like you're not phased. You can tell the part of a predator by what they hunt. Eventually I learned that if you don't look like easy prey, cowardly predators will move on. Part of staying safe was hiding my feminine nature and taking on a more masculine bravado in how I carried myself. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna end it here. Um, I will more likely play more and analyze it more as it times goes on. Hopefully this buffering will stop. Uh, Y'all understand my page is hacked, okay? So it's long freaking story, long story, trust me. It's not my Wi-Fi, my Wi-Fi is amazing. It's a long story and it's really nerve wracking because I can't even do a simple live show and this is Ethernet and it's ridiculous. So I'm going to end it here and um, I'll definitely keep, keep you guys updated as I continue reading. Thanks for staying out the duration of this video. I'm getting very frustrated with this whole buffering thing. I'm sick of it, honestly. They already reviewing every video that I put out in terms of live stream. Um, one time I tried to update the video, the page was coming off. The words were sliding off the page. So yes, my shit is hacked. So I'm just going to go ahead and end it here. And I'll definitely, definitely keep you guys updated. It's definitely my Patreon. I'm starting to update my Patreon now. But remember, I'm doing this alone and I'm working a full-time job. So be patient with me. Thank you for all who stayed throughout the duration of this video. I may randomly go live later. I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling. But y'all have a wonderful day. Bye.